Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Smash Up Marvel Edition. Uh, this is by the OP and AEG, meaning they've teamed up with their IP contracts and of course with the game Smash Up by AEG and made this wonderful Marvel version of Smash Up. And it is a two to four player game that is a competitive game, usually takes about 30 to maybe 45 minutes to play. It doesn't really matter the amount of players that much. And it's for ages about, mm, I'd say eight to 13 and up. It's a fairly simple strategic game about collecting cards from a deck that you kind of make yourself at the beginning of the game and placing them down on bases. You'll have characters who are trying to score these bases that are available and whoever has the most point on each of the bases when they blow up, so to speak, will score valuable victory points. And then the second place and the third place. Your objective, 15 points. If you can trigger that victory condition, the game will end. And of course, if you have the most or if there's a tie, I believe there's some type of unique thing that happens, um, and you basically will win the game though. Uh, that is basically the idea of the game, but this one here has a Marvel variant with the Marvel different factions and characters, which we're going to talk about. I'll explain for those of you who haven't played a Smash Up game before, how it is played, how it is set up, and of course give you my review just like always. Let's get into the video. To set up any game of Smash Up, it's very simple. Basically, there's going to be eight decks that come in most of these games, and each of these decks will formulate one deck when you put two, one and one together. Basically, if I have an Evil Masters, or Masters of Evil, and a Sinister Six uh, deck, I can go ahead and take these decks, shuffle them together, and all of a sudden I have my own unique customized deck that I'll be utilizing for the game Smash Up Marvel. And there's, a, like I said, eight different decks to choose from, and you can combine them in any way, shape, or form that you would like. Like. You cannot mix more than two decks together though. Uh, for instance, this is the other one. This is the Ultimates and this is the Spider-Verse and this is the other deck that we'll be playing, I guess, in this example mode of the game. And you'll hopefully shuffle more times than I do, but you get the drift of it. Place the deck next to each player that has selected the pairs and then take these smash up bases that have this color back and shuffle them as well. After that, you're going to reveal X plus one. X being number of players plus one bases, depending on how many, game, how many players you are playing. So in this case, a two player variation, I'm going to reveal X, which is two players, plus one, which is going to be three players, thus they are three total bases, which is for a two player game, which there you go, symbolizes the different locations where you can place your heroes in order to try and score them. After that, you're going to set the victory points aside next to the smash up base deck, and you're going to then draw five cards from your deck for each player and you will have the first player start the game maybe it's the most person most recent person to watch a marvel movie or maybe the most recent person to win a game of smash up i mean you really can decide for yourself and then you're going to get into play it's that simple take two decks shuffle them up place out the bases victory points next to them and you're ready to go so now after a bit of camera magic i went and reshuffled the decks a little more thoroughly even though i'm not going to be really playing this game because it's very very simple but i will do enough to explain how it works. So on a player's turn, they're going to go ahead and choose to play one of their characters and one of their actions. Actions can be modifiers, things that affect other players, and have certain unique things that can happen. Maybe they attack, uh, attach to a base or another character. Maybe they are going to move a character from one base to another. Speaking of that, how does that work? Well, when you play a character, you can choose any of the bases available and place your character down on that base. Whenever you play a card, check to see what it does. Sometimes they're passive, other times they're active. In this case, I have an Absorbing Man, and it says the talent is to destroy this character and another Absorbing Man, which will give me a victory point. So if I have two of them out on the field, and I destroy them at any point on my turn, I then gain one victory point. Whenever you clear bases, you can get a maximum of about five points, and then a minimum of about one or two. So that kind of gives you a gauge of how much they are valued at. Absorbing Man have the power of two. Most bases are going to have a battle value or a base value of around 20 to 30 points, sometimes a little lower. Um, and when you break that point barrier is when you're going to score the bases. So if I played my Absorbing Man onto this base, I could then play, oh, I don't know, a special action. Bam! Convergence. Move one of your characters to another base. If it is moved, if you have four or more characters at that base, you gain a victory point. So I can move this guy over here. I would then check to see if I have four characters on this base area. And if I do, I would take a point. In this case, because it's the first turn, I wouldn't. And in fact, it'd probably be a bad choice to play that card. 
After that, your turn is over. You're going to draw two cards, and then the next player is going to get a chance to go. And that's the game. Very, very simple. Place a character on one of the bases, if you have one, and you should always start with one character in your hand at the beginning of the game, and then play an action card and see what it does. And of course, for any additional instructions, it's going to be in the rule book, and it'll explain how they work. Okay, so bases. Like I said before, there's a total value on the top left-hand corner of one of your bases. And that is the cumulative value that you and all of your opponents need to reach in order for the base to score. So if I have a 10 and my opponent has a 12, that would equal up to 22. And this base is a 22, which would thus mean that this base is going to score. When a player places that last unit that will reach that value on the top left corner, that at the end of their turn, that base will then score the victory points. The player who has the most cumulative score between all of their specific characters will get the highest point value, and then the next player will get the next lowest, and then the third player will get the finer, final value. Each of these bases also has a passive or an active ability. Like for instance, this is the shields base, and it says on your turn, you may play a character of power two or less here as an extra uh, character. So you can actually play an additional character, but only when you play it on the shield base. So if I had two absorbing men, I could place one, and I could place another, and I could discard them and gain a victory point if I wanted. Or I could leave them on the shield base, and then their value of two, and another two is going to net me four, which is going to get me all that much closer to being first place and making this base score. When the base scores, the victory points are divided amongst all the players that are able to score them. All the characters and modifiers are going to be discarded, and a new card, a new base, will be placed up next to the pool. So you're always going to have three in a two-player game, you'll always have four in a three-player game, and five in a four-player game. And then you'll rinse and repeat. Players will just keep going after the turn is over and the bases have been scored, and the next player will take their turn, thusly starting off by playing a character, and then playing an action, and then, of course, drawing two cards. Max amount of cards you can have in your hand is 10, and whoever gets to 15 points first is the winner. Okay, so I feel I've reviewed Smash Up in the past. Maybe I haven't. I actually do not remember. Maybe I'll have to cover them both. Smash Up is a very popular game made by AEG. I believe first published by AEG. I could be wrong. Paul Peterson, I believe, is, yes, the designer of the game. Uh, Smash Up is, I would say, world-renowned, very, very popular, and for good reason. It is a very straightforward, simplistic area control game, but with unique tactical decisions and combinations of character uh, decks. Now, you can, can combine any two Smash Up decks you'd like, and they are all combinable. So if you bought the Marvel version, and then you went ahead and bought something like the Hulk version, or you bought the uh, Harry Potter version, uh, the Cats version, there's princesses, there's all kinds. And I mean, like, I almost, probably even, I would say, almost a hundred if not maybe even more, uh, different types of Smash Up decks. And they each range in different stylizations. One deck will have a, a full amount of units that are all fives. So like for instance, I believe there's the Avengers and all of those characters are fives in there. Whereas maybe the Spider-Man characters, there's twos, there's threes, there's fours, and there's a five. And the five is usually the best one in those type of a deck. And so the customization is always different. Some decks revolve around moving their characters around and scoring points that way. Other decks revolve around uh, defeating their own characters or destroying other characters and scoring points in that way. But all of them are involved in trying to score points by capturing a base. If you can at least get second place and use your deck's scoring method, most of them have one, you are going to be able to come really close to winning. And of course, if you can use your deck very, very wisely and also score that first spot in each of the bases, you're pretty close to being guaranteed to win the game. Uh, I really personally have always loved Smash Up. I think it's a really straightforward game. It's something that's easy to teach, very gateway, and also it's got the great mm, aspect of having the different IPs to kind of enthrall and engage players who may or may not be interested in a game that's all about area control and, of course, card management. But when you throw in Marvel and Spider-Man and Harry Potter and all these other different types of IPs, it's very easy for me to draw in these new gamers, and that's what I really like about this game. Uh, this game here, specifically, has a ton of the different Marvel Universe characters. You're going to have the Avengers here, and it's going to come with all their popular characters like the Hulk and Thor, and who else has it got? It's got Captain America, uh, Black Widow, so on and so forth. So you're going to have all of these characters, and that's all in just one singular deck. 
or maybe you want to look at something like, oh, I don't know, Hydra, and it's going to have the Hydra agents. It'll have Madame Hydra, it'll have Arnon Zola, Baron Strucker, Red Skull is going to be in here. And so each of these like small theme decks of 20 cards, which will form a 40 card two deck combination, uh, have enough theme and stylization to them to where you feel like they are their own unique deck and they function very uniquely to each other. Um, much like the other games of Marvel, I would say that they do share a lot of similarities. There's usually a deck that has one 5555 five, five, five in it, then there's multiple different types of deck that will either use movement or use destruction of characters. If you are looking and you already own a lot of Smash Up and you're looking for a unique twist on the Smash Up genre, this is probably not going to be it for you. But if you do want the additional combinations of decks to add to your collection, which a lot of you collectors might, or you're a big Marvel fan, then this is going to be an easy jump in for you. It's another additional character. So I'll be taking all this and I'll be putting it into my Smash Up collection when all is said and done here. And uh, I do really, really enjoy the artwork for the game. I like the combinations and I like how all the decks function and have their own unique types of skills and abilities and you'll kind of get into that with that. It also comes with a large amount of the unique uh, different locations for the Marvel Universe like the Hydra Lab, uh, Castle Zemo, I'm gonna say that wrong, the Kree Lair, Stark's Lab, Avengers Tower, Exospace, Manhattan, etc, etc. So you have all these different locations that are nicely entwined with the Marvel Universe. So you get a big pack a, a big uh, game packed full of Marvel, and that's going to be anybody's, any Marvel fan's dream uh, to go ahead and pick up something like this because the game is also excellent. This is something that I've easily played with two, three, and four players and always had a good time, but I always suggest the four player version because that involves more unique twists and turns that makes bases score quicker. And of course, uh, when you're playing with more players, you want to do kind of a spacing. And if it's, when it's one on one, you can have one player play on one side of the bases and another play on the player on the other side. But I would suggest is if you're playing with lots of players, move the bases far enough so that way each player will have a corner of a card to place and stack their characters up. So this over here is the Hala base, and we have the Green Goblin and Baron Zemo, which is from one deck, this one over here, and then we have Spider-Man 2099 and Miles Morales on the opposite end for this other deck, and this is all being played on the same side. And then of course, when we look at this base over here, the New York Landmark, you would place it on the far top bottom left, you would know that this and this are connected, thusly it's from this player's deck, and hopefully that kind of helps. Negatives for Smash Up. Um, honestly, I don't have any personally. This is a very, very, very popular game and for very good reason. I can just say that if it's not the type of game that you would be interested in playing, if you don't like area control, a little bit of take that. If you do not like the fact that it's drawing cards and sometimes you might not get the cards that you specifically want, it's not a 100% skill. There is some luck involved in the game. And maybe if you do not like the specific IP, but if that's the case, there are a ton of different Smash Ups available for you. Regardless though, if you have never played Smash Up, I suggest you at least try one of them out because it is a lot of fun and it's something I'll easily be keeping and adding to my Smash Up collection. And for those of you who are collectors out there, this is a great uh, game to have all the different things for because it will make e it easy to allow other players to jump in. My wife plays with kittens and princesses and maybe I'll play with Spider-Man and Carnage. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Smash Up Marvel Edition. If you're interested in the game, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick the game up. If you would also like, you can go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to check out and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And of course, the notification button if you'd like to see more videos just like this one. Every Sunday night, we do a live stream at 6.30 p.m. PST where you can come and see us play games just like this one. And in fact, you might just see this one come out. And of course, as always, thank you so much for watching. And I will look forward to seeing you guys next time.